This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, Rabbi Isai. Um, so this is our buffer week. Uh, we finished Masechta Chagiga, and we're going to be starting a new Masechta next week, Merz Hashem. And we're still in the week after Sukkot, um, and the Shivas didn't even start the new Zman yet. It's still Ben Azmanim. So we could still do one topic relevant to Sukkot, but it's a, it's a Lamdash topic. It's not only specific to Sukkot, but in general, whenever you have a uh, contradiction between two mitzvahs. So here we have a very unique circumstance. So let's say a guy uh, is in a situation where he could travel to one city, and in that city he would be able to make in the mitzvah of Sukkah, or he could travel to another city, and in that city he could make in the mitzvah of Lulav. Which one should he do? So I know what you're thinking. You let him stay home. Sukkot is over. He doesn't have to go anywhere. Okay? But we're talking about on Sukkot, right? And in other words, which mitzvah is more important? The mitzvah of Sukkah or the mitzvah of Dalad Minim? Which is a more important mitzvah? Say, what do you mean, which one's more important? Hevizar of a mitzvah, Kala Kibachamura, Shiyata Yodea, Matan Schar, and Shal Mitzvahs. That just means you should be careful in every mitzvah because you don't know exactly how much reward. But if bottom line, there is some kind of conflict between two mitzvahs. Which mitzvah is more important to perform? Okay, and this question is raised by the Maharshak. Actually, the uh, the um, ne- Leil Shmini Atzeres. I was invited to eat by somebody, and obviously in the sukkah, we're eating in the sukkah. Obviously, like the Gemara says, like the Shachnar says, and we were sitting in there. And there was a guest, and I asked him, his name, his name is Mr. Maharshak. So, well, you know, that's an interesting name. Well, tell me, Maharshak. Marenu Harav Shlom McClugger. He was a direct descendant of Shlom McClugger. So the first person to raise this question was the Maharshak, Shlom McClugger. He says, in the Maharshak wrote Hagois on Shulchan Aruch, and in his footnotes on Shulchan Aruch, called the Yichach Mashlom, he wants to know... You have two cities before you. One city has a sukkah, one city has a lulav. Which city should you go to? Or if let's say someone was in jail. And the uh, jail warden says, Pal, you can only do, well, don't let me catch you doing two mitzvahs. You can only do one mitzvah. Sukkah or Lulav? Mikhaim Sukkah or Lulav? So at first glance, as of Shlomo Kluger, it would seem that you should be Mikhaim in the mitzvah of Sukkah. Why? Sukkah is Shuvah Siyamim, and the Lulav it only says... Because the first night... Okay, Sukkah is seven days, Lulav is one day. But anyway, you're only being Mikhaim one time, one of the mitzvahs. So do you say, because Sukkah is seven days, it therefore is a Bigger, better mitzvah? Is that a svara? But you can't. You're not going to have to. Does the fact that you could do the mitzvah seven days, does that make it more important? No. We'll see. Maybe. I would, I would take the sukkah because that's the first mitzvah that come, comes into your hands because you don't have the rule of an esro. No, night. this is a case where you have neither and you have to choose one or the right. other. So, so Baruch says, go. well, I would go at night. which mitzvah comes first? The sukkah comes right. first. It's the sukkah comes first. But and that's during the daytime, and the, and the guy's asking you, which one do you want to do, it's sukkah or lula? It's a daytime question. Or le, is it, uh, are you saying, obviously if it's at night, and he says, go do one mitzvah, there's only one mitzvah you could do. Right. There's no question. Right? That, right? So, but now it's the next morning. Next morning. So, well, but maybe you're right, maybe it's as far to say, well, I'm obligated to do the mitzvah that I encountered first, and the mitzvah that I encountered first is the mitzvah of sukkah. So the Marshak says the following. Hine lechayer hayonira the sukkah kaidem to have a kaidem is man, like you suggested. Sukkah's time comes first. The zecha abalayla, sukkah already is an obligation at night. The zebiyim and lulav only is during the day. However, says Rav Shlomo Kluger in my chidushim in my drashos for sukkahs in the year eighteen thirty seven. He quoted himself. Tough. He says, check out. There's a very good book. It's called Rosh of Shlomo Kluger from the year Tafkuf Tzadi Zayin, which is 
1937. 1837, right? Mm-hmm. A long time ago. Hey, Alasi, the Lulav I decided no. Lulav comes first. Why? Mikoyach to who Persume Nisa. Lulav has Persume Nisa. What's the Persume Nisa in Lulav? Kamasha Kasa the Medrash, like the Medrash says in Pashas Emar, that when we wave our Lulav, it's a symbol like when the warriors come back from war. If they're holding on their armor, that's a sign they won the war. So too, when we emerge from Yom Kippur and we're holding our weapons, that's a sign that we defeated the Umay Sa'ilam on Yom Kippur. So in a way, in effect, it's a Parsume Nisa. So ask, so what? Who sees it? Who else sees it? Who sees it? Yeah, who sees it? What do you mean? The government has everything bugged. Everything you do, Obama's watching. Everything. You have cameras, you know. Right. Exactly. Okay. He says, when you take your Lulav and Esrog, that identifies that Klai Yisrael was Zoycha Bedin, and therefore Lulav takes precedence. I now since I, when... I don't argue with Rav Shalom Kulesa. Rav Yanko does not argue with Rav Shalom That's a, a policy that he has. <laughs> he does not argue with Rav Shalom Kulesa. But he, what he, Rav Shalom says is that Lulav and Esrog has an element of Parsume Nisa and Parsume Nisa Adif. Where does he get, where does he get this rule? That if you have two mitzvahs, and one mitzvah is for Sumei Nisa, it takes precedence. Where do we see such a thing? I'm obvious. Any, any other mitzvah that you have, you always do the part of Sumei Nisa. Like what? Neres Hanukkah and Neres Shabbos. Well, what do you do if you can only light Neres Shabbos and Neres Hanukkah? No? Shabbos. Shabbos. <laughs> you don't do the for Sumei Nisa. Why? You were, you were, you, were, you, you not only you're close, you got it. <laughs> Just what the problem is over there. Shabbos is in the window. Shabbos supersedes everything. No, well, one reason might be because near Shabbos it might be Doraisa. Is near Shabbos Doraisa? That's a big shaila, but it might be Doraisa. And near Shabbos trumps near Hanukkah, which is for Sumenisa. They said, yeah, of course, because Doraisa trumps. Uh, Parsume Nusa is a factor, but that's everything else being equal. But Shabbos might be Doraisa, and, and Ner Chanukah is Drabanon. Well, the Gemara says the reason why Ner Shabbos takes precedence over uh, Ner Chanukah is for a different reason. The Gemara says Shalom Bayis. That trumps everything. Fahamiv and Yavit, right? But then the Gemara says, Ner Beisai Vikidosh Hayoim. Also, Ner Shabbos comes first. What about Ner Chanukah? And Kiddush on Shabbos Day. Now Kiddush on Shabbos Day is what? It's only Midra Banan. Shabbos, right? The Shabbos night Kiddush is much more important than the Shabbos Day Kiddush. Shabbos Day Kiddush on Midra Banan. So now you have two Midra Banans. You have Ner Chanukah and you have what? You have um, Kiddush Hayyam, says the Gemara. The Gemara has that Shaila. The Gemara says, Rava, boy, Rava. And the Gemara said, Parsume Nisa, Adif, Mishim Parsume Nisa. So from here, Rav Shlomo Kluger derives that all things being equal, Parsume Nisa wins. And therefore, says Rav Shlomo Kluger, that since Lulav has an element of Parsume Nisa, therefore it should trump Sukkah. Now where do we see that Lulav has an element of Parsume Nisa? It's a Medrash in Amar. Look at number two. Davar Acher. This is the meaning of the Pasuk. He turns to the Tefillah of the withered one. Yisrael Badin. Klal Yisrael was victorious in battle. And their sins were forgiven. So, so the matter says... When we wave the when we wave the lulav and esrog, that's a symbol that we were menatzeach and din. By the way, then Rav Shlomo Kluger brings another proof that lulav takes precedence. You ready for this? came in I'll bring you a raya that lulav and esrog takes precedence over dalad min uh, over a sukkah. From the Psukim and the Chomish. Why? To Hikdim Lulav, the Yeshiva Sukkah. In the Torah, which mitzvah appears first? 
Dalad minim or a sukkah? So that means it's more, it, it, has, it takes precedence because it was written in the Torah first? Well, that's what he says. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 does that mean the first, the first mitzvah is the most important because it was written first? Well, what's the first mitzvah? The in a way, it's a very, it's an important one, yeah. An important one. I don't know if it's 612 or not. Um, Unless it's so. I hear. That's what he says. That somehow the the pecking order. No, he never said. He, he never said he has that policy, you know. But um, the other writer, Shlomo Kluger, Klug, brings is the fact that in the Torah, it says. Lakhtam Lakham look at number three by Yamarisha and Priya Tadar, Kapois Tamarim, Anafi Tavasarve Nachal, and only then Basuka is Teshvu Shivasyamim. I would point out the fact that if you look in Masakta Sukha, Masakta Sukha talks about Sukha first and only then the Dalad Minim. <laughs> the opposite of the Khamesh. But Shlomo Kluger says the fact that the Torah speaks about the Dalad Minim before Sukkah means the Dalad Minim have precedence. Now, I also have a policy that I don't argue with Rav Shlomo Kluger. <laughs> but I would, say, I would say maybe just the opposite. That the Torah asks a question, right? The famous question of the Torah. The Torah asks that we're, why do we sit in Sukkah is to commemorate to commemorate, let's say, Anani Akavoid. So the Torah asks, so why do we sit in Sukkot in Tishrei? We should sit in Sukkot in Nisan. So the Torah gives the following answer. That if we would sit in Sukkot in Nisan, when the weather is good, it would not be recognizable that we're trying to be Mekayim in the Mitzvah. Maybe we're just enjoying the weather. But now we go out in the rainy season when there are hurricanes, when there are windstorms, that nobody thinks we're going out to enjoy the weather. So I ask you a question. Who would it not be recognizable to? The garden. People. Well, what people? Us? With all the Yoshbizen and with all the Lashem Yichuds and with all the Tfilois, it's not recognizable what we're trying to do? It, doesn't that mean there's some element of Persume Nisa to Sukkah, like you're, you're asking before. So, I mean, you can make the case the other way. Maybe, you know, if I were to ask you, which mitzvah has more Persume Nisa? But on the other hand, there is an Indian, you know, in Yushalayim, they walk to Shul with the Luv and Esrog in hand. That's part of, there is a certain Persum. But Sukkah also has a, the same degree. Laman Yedu. Where does it say Laman Yedu? It says by, by, by Dalad Minim, it says Laman Yedu. It says it by Sukkah Laman Yedu. Okay. What about the idea that the Arba Minim, maybe it's actually more than one mitzvah. Maybe each of the Minim is a mitzvah by itself. Uh, and so if you're going to have the opportunity to do both, maybe there's uh, something to say that you're really getting the kind of more four to one. one. But why is it okay. mitzvah, Why would but it, it be a mitzvah but it's, by that, itself? When it says you take four minutes. But it's mentioning each one. And if it's mentioning each one, maybe each one has episode uh, shtickle of a mitzvah involved in it. So that's the question. How many mitzvahs do you get if, let's say, you have a lulav, esrog, hadas, and you don't have arabos? How many mitzvahs do you get? None. Three or zero? Zero. Right? You don't get any. So it's really, it's not like shalyad and shalroish, which are two separate mitzvahs. It's a package deal. It's a package deal. It's an all in one. It's all or nothing. You know? So, okay. Is there, is there an Indian of Tadr, the Shein, a Tadr, Tadr, Kardam in this, in this situation? Either, what would the Tadr be? Right. Either, okay, let's let's go back to the the, the, the one of Kiddush and, and, and Neris Hanukkah, let's say. Right. If you make Kiddush every, you know, 52 times a year, and, uh, and, and Hanukkah you're doing... Eight times a, a year. That's the Gemara Shaila. When the Gemara asks, Ner Chanukah v'Kiddush Hayom, do we say Kiddush Hayom Adif the Tadir? Ah, okay. Or do we say Persume Nisa trumps Tadir? And the Gemara concludes, Persume Nisa trumps Tadir. Ah, okay. So let's, how about so you want, now with Sukkah and, and okay. Lula? So maybe Sukkah is eight days, Lula is only one day. Again, maybe Tadir is Shana. So you want to apply Tadir. So the question is, does Tadir apply by something which is a little bit more frequent, but really not that frequent. 
You wouldn't say objectively that sukkah is tadir, it's just more tadir than lula. We'll see that, possibly. Well, sukkah, you, you, know, you perform the mitzvah with your whole body, you're totally engrossed. Lula, you're holding your hand. It's, it's, you're not as involved. Except right. you're trying to figure out how to finance the astro. That's a different question. So Mr. Zolkin saying, you know, the famous Vilna Gain, that uh, there are only two mitzvahs that you're making with your whole body. Uh, sukkah and Yishev Eretz Yisrael. And the Rem is, Vayhi b'shalem sukkai uma aynasai b'tziyayin. Vayhi b'shalem. When do you do a mitzvah b'shalemus? Sukkai, either sukkahs, uma aynasai b'tziyayin, or Yishev Eretz Yisrael. Okay, but the question is, does that give it, therefore, priority? As they say, as far as are a dime a dozen, right? You could come up with this reason this way, that reason that way. There's a say for Moyed L'chol Chai. Moyed L'chol Chai is from Rav Chaim Filaji, one of the Sephardic Goinim. He writes in Simen Chaf Ois Mem Dad, Sukkah, right, so so far we saw Sfara to say Sukkah first because it comes first in Zman, it's ready Chal in the night time. On the other hand, we have two Sfaras to say Lulav comes first, either for Sumei Nisa or, and also because it's written first in the Chumash. Rav Chaim Falaji says, Sukkah koidem lululav, dezeh yoim echad vezeh shiva yamim. Like Mr. Summer said, Sukkot is only, Sukkot is seven days, and lulav is only one day. So you say, what are you talking about one day? In Hillcrest, they only take the Sukkot, the lulav one day? How many days do they take lulav in Hillcrest? The same as you have in Q The same as Q How many? How many days? Seven days. But Midai Raisa, it's only one day. Midai Raisa, it's only one day. But the Sukkah also, if you eat, you have to eat in the Sukkah. But there's no Chiyah, uh-huh. you eat just Peros, no Chiyah, just like Matzah. You, and the rest of the days, you know, there's no uh, okay. Chiyah. But the first day, there is a Chiyah. Just like all of them. So you say they're equal. But, sukkah, well, what about people who you could be Mekai and Midoi Raisa all seven days. And Lulav, you could only be Mekai and Midoi Raisa one day. On the other hand, you could use it like this. On the first day of sukkah, you must take your Lulav, Midoi Raisa. And on all subsequent days, you must take it Midoi On sukkah, you must send the sukkah the first day of the Raisa. And on all subsequent days, you, don't, you never have to send the sukkah. So in any, if in any, in any uh, you, you could make the case, lulav is more important. Because lulav, at least the other days you have to do midravan, on sukkah the other days you don't have to do at all. So that's far number one. Far number one is... I told you, you're you to sleep in the sukkah. And then that's all seven days. But you don't have to sleep. No one told you to sleep. What about the story also about the Lakakta Mulchem? The first day when it's clearly a Duraisa, it has to be yours. But Sukkah, you could be Nakayim with anybody's Sukkah. So the fact that. So what does that do? So it makes the fact that the, the Lulav associated with you maybe is a little starker than a Sukkah that you could use anybody. It's oh. more of a personal mm-hmm. connection. Okay, we'll see about that story as well. Okay? So for, uh, first. Th- First, Reb um, Chaim Falaji says, Sukkah is seven days, Lulav is one day. Number two, V'ay the Sukkah, Yoyser Tadr. Again, right? Like you suggested. The Sukkah is more common. The Hitamidi L'chol Ayoyim L'chol Alayla. Ah! It's day and night, Sukkah. Lulav is only the day. He doesn't make it, he's interesting, he doesn't make it Tadr because it's seven to one. He makes it Tadr because it's more consistent, day and night. And number three... What's the name of the holiday? Lulav. Bati tell on Hashem I can't know. Be a hava. Is it Chag Lulav? Chag Kahadasim? Chag Esroig? Chag Sukkos? Right, everywhere it's a Chag Sukkos in Kigarn Hills, in Muncie. Everywhere it's Chag Sukkos. <laughs> Everywhere it's Chag Sukkos. Yeah. So, therefore, obviously, the name of the holiday indicates uh, the importance. Uh, where which mitzvah is more important? Now, I would say, come on, that's a raya. 
That's the name of the Yamtiv? Who said that's the name of the Yamtiv? It does, the Torah says. The Torah calls it Chag Asukais. I said, what's the name of the Masechta? Masechta Lulav. Masechta Sukkah. Ela de Besukkah is Bachada. But Sukkah has a Maila. You ready? Just the opposite of what you would have thought. So, so far, Lula, um, Sukkah has three Mailas. It's seven days. It's Tadir. And that's the name of the Yamtif. Ela de Besukkah is Bachada. Sukkah has one Maila. And that is the Yoytse Besheula. Sukkah has a maila. You could even borrow a sukkah. <laughs> Lulav, you can't borrow. Right? So the fact that you could, the fact that the mitzvah is so more all-encompassing, it's like more available, maybe makes it greater. And then he says, maybe you could add that sukkah comes first. He says, Ayin b'sam em roish sim and samach gimel. Sukkah comes first. It hits first. What does that mean? Sukkah is chal already at the beginning of the Yom. Lulav is not chal till the next day. You know, there's a famous story about Rabbi Levi Yitzchak about Dichov, that the night of Sukkot, he was lying in bed, he couldn't fall asleep. He was so excited, so excited, he couldn't wait to be the Dalet Minim. And like he's waiting for the sun to rise, waiting for the sun, and the second sun rise, he dashed at the Luvanessa, you know, he stuck his hands right through the glass of the break front, smashing the whole break front, and he took the Dalad Minim. But the sukkah ready was chal the night before. So says uh, Rav Chaim Falaji, as far as that, I don't really understand. No, it's not true. They're both chal at the same time. Why? Because when do you start, when does the mitzvah start? Mitzvah starts when you need to prepare it. Which mitzvah do you prepare first? Dalad minim or sukkah? The same thing. I mean, you could build the sukkah, you could buy the dalad minim, and both begin the same time. So I don't understand that. That's not part, that's not the mitzvah. In terms of the chiv ha mitzvah, the chiv of sukkah is definitely poigeya first. But I do have a policy that I don't argue with Reb Chaim Falaji either. <laughs> but that's what he says. He says that. Um, Bottom line is, sukkah has three reasons why it's better. It's seven days, it's tadir, and it takes over the name of the yamtif. And for those three reasons, ding, 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 sukkah wins. So right now, says we, if I were to ask you, if you were in jail, and you could be mekayim, either sukkah or lulav, what should you do? The Marshak, Rosh Shlomo Kluger says, what? Lulav, Parsume Nisa. And the Rav Chaim Falaji, he says, no. He says, um, Sukkah. So maybe Ashkenazim will follow the Marshak and the Sfardim will follow. So if you have Ashkenazim and Sfardim in jail, it's going to be a big uh, divide regarding uh, which mitzvah they're going to be, they want to go out for. Ah, now we have another opinion. The Mate Ephraim, Rabbi Ephraim Zalman Margolius. Says Rabbi Ephraim Zalman Margolius in the Mate Ephraim. Mate Ephraim, of course, is the preeminent work on the halachas of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkis. Mishu be Yomtov, someone on Yomtov, the fun of Shnei Makaimas. He has two places. Ba'achas Yesham Sukkah, Be'ain Sham Lulav. One place has a Sukkah, has no Lulav. Ba'achas Yesham Lulav, Be'ain Sham Sukkah. So it says like this, if in the place where there's a sukkah, you could anticipate, you know, by the end of the day, you'll get a hold of a lulav. It won't be in the morning, it'll be like right before shkia. So then he says, go to the place where there's a sukkah, because as long as the lulav gets, gets to you before the night, you could do both. But the yeah, you can be mekayim's a lulav the whole day. Or if let's say you could send a guy and bring a lulav, you should do that. And, but he ends off like this. Which one do you do? You go to a city that has better potato kogol. That's where you go. No, I'm just joking. You go to wherever you want. Wherever you want. So he says they're equal. Pick them. One doesn't take your preference. He does not decide. He's undecided. 
Now he wrote a commentary on Dimat uh, Ephraim, Elef Lamata, and he said. Maybe what, he wrote a commentary on his own? It's, not, it's more, um, more like, just like the Chavetz Chaim wrote, you know, more B'Kitzer, and then he wrote more, right. Sure, sure. This is more of the, like, the Pilpul behind it. Right. He says on the third line, look in the Olachar, Yesh Loimar, Sheyelech Lamakam Sukkah. He said it would seem you should go to the place where the Sukkah is. Kivan Shemitzvah Sukkah, Chala Olav Belayla. The Mitzvah of Sukkah is Chala at night. V'chiv Zeh Chala Olav Kaidem. Hu M'chiv La'asoy Subizmano, D'chiv Ashaytahu. Aye, by being Mekayim Sukkah, now you won't be able to Mekayim the Lulav. Biafa gav dali dezeh, lo yuchal lekayim mitzvah lulav, shechal lulav, achar kein leslama, who cares? In other words, he says, it would seem you should do the mitzvah which is chal first. Aye, by doing the mitzvah which is chal first, now you're putting yourself in a situation where you can't be Mekayim the ase which is chal later. Too bad. Because even by a lav, right, we know there's a rule, ase is doi chaloi sase. But I say, let's say like this, if somebody um, wants to be Mekayim, a mitzvah tzitzis pushes off shatness. But the Gemara says that, um, right, there's a toysis in Masechta Baba Basra that says a woman who's a chatzi shivcha, chatzi bas chayren, there's no one for her to marry. Why? Because she can't marry a regular Jew, because a regular Jew cannot live with the half of her, which is a shifcha. So Taisa asks, why not? I say the chalois, I say. Let the say a pruravu come along and push off the lav of living with the shifcha. So Taisa says, no, I can't, because you're not Mekayim pruravu until the end of the bia, and the lav of living with the goya, you're, you violate already bihara at the beginning of the bia. And there's a rule. Ase is only doi chaloi sase if the ase is being fulfilled at the time that you're violating the lav. But if you're first violating the lav and a second later you're being mekayim the ase, the ase can't push off the loi sase. So what do we see from here? That a mitzvah sase cannot push off a lav. That in other words, he says, Da filu gabe loi sase, I'm reading the chol debe idna de meyakar lav. Any time that when you're violating the lav, loy mekayim say you're not being mekayim say loy dachi, we don't push it off. So certainly, an ase is not going to push off another ase if it's not at the same time. What are you going to tell me? How could you go sit in the sukkah, but now let the mitzvah of taking the aluminum push off the mitzvah of sitting in the sukkah? It can't push it off. It's not happening at the same time. So therefore, go be mekayim the sukkah. But then he says like this. Ella, this is like eight lines down. She is sad loimar. She yoiser yesh lelech lemakam she is sham lulav. Maybe you should go to a place where there's a lulav. You say, why? How could lulav have precedence over a sukkah? She sham yikayim biyom risham mitzvah sasei dairais. If you go to the lulav, you'll get an asei dairais on day one. On day two, you get a drabonon. There's only a the first night. From there on, on, you don't have to eat it at all. There's no chiyav. So if you go to the lulav, you get a dairaisa, and then you get a drabonon. If you go to the sukkah, all you get is one dairaisa. Aye, but wouldn't it seem like the obligation of right now takes precedence? After all, if you're sitting here right now, and at night, what Kiev what encounters you first? Sukkah. Shouldn't you go to the Sukkah? Why should you wait? Says Ephraim Zamra Golas. The idea of Yafa Mitzvah B'Shaita, that's only if the Mitzvah is in front of you. But right now, you're in New York City, and the Sukkah is in Westchester, and the Lulav is in Hoboken. None of, none of the Mitzvahs are encountering you. You're right, the night of sukkah, if you would have a sukkah in front of you, that mitzvah would encounter you first. But right now, you don't have either. So since you don't have either, nothing encounters you. So now you have to make an educated decision. Where should I go where I'll be able to mekayim more mitzvahs? He says, That's only if you're in a place where you're chayv in this mitzvah. Shekish magia is man mitzvahu. When the time for that mitzvah comes, Iyav shalit choisa, 
you can't push it off. So that you cannot be Mekayim other mitzvahs afterwards. So in the case you cited, Rabbi, where one's in Hoboken and one's in Westchester and you're yeah. in New it's Arab Sukkot. You can only choose to go to one place. Even though the Sukkot is not the fun of, mm-hmm. but isn't it Kamat the fun of? Because you can only go to one place. Since I can only go to one place, I should go to the place where, in the long run, I'll end up being Mekayim more mitzvahs. No, more mitzvahs. He's saying you should go to the Lulav, because if I go to the Lulav, what? I'll get Dairaisa the first day, and the Rabbanon on subsequent days. I, what do you mean? But the Sukkah comes first? No, but it doesn't hit me first, because I'm not there. If, if like this, I, let's say like this. He, that means he'll be saying that. If I'm in a place where I have a Sukkah, but I don't have a lulav. And I could go to a different city that has a lulav. So should I stay here and be Mekayim Sukkah? Or should I go elsewhere and be Mekayim Lulav? What should you do? You there you have to stay here. No, let's say you... you get your it's either I go now to lulav. It's either one or the other. Let's say that's the situation. It's either one or the other. So then he would say, No, the midst of Sukkah encounters me first, and therefore I, I do the Sukkah, and uh, it preempts the lulav, even though if I go to lulav, I get a Dairais and then Drabanans. But if I don't have either, what? It's a dairaisa. Second Every night is a dairaisa. It's just I don't have to eat. It's only a dairaisa if I choose to eat. But that's only. So I have the capability to make multiple dairaisas as opposed to one dairaisa and multiple dairabundance if I go to where the lulav is. Wow. So isn't that odd? Compared to one Doraisa and multiple Dorabonans, as opposed to the possibility of multiple Doraisas? I hear, I hear. Definitely commits a strong case. And the other, and he's making the other side of the argument that it's not a Chiyav, it's only, it's discretionary. So the Lulav is a Chi of the Arisa and then a Chi of the Rabbana. And then a Chi of the Rabbana. Whereas the Sukkah is a Chi of the Arisa and, and then discretionary, but discretionary of the Arisa. Correct. And therefore, based on this whole pilpul, where you could basically go both ways, his conclusion is if you're in a place and you could either go A to do Sukkah, B to do Lulav, what should you do? Whatever you want. So the followers of Rav Shlomo Kluger will go to the Lulav. The followers of Rav Chaim Falaji will go to the Sukkah. And the followers of Rav Chaim Zamagos will go to where they have better potato kogel. That's where they'll go. Okay. Let's see one more Mara In, in Yerushalayim, you would go for the Sukkah, you go for the Lulav. So in Yerushalayim, where Sukkah is Dairaisa, all seven... And you could either go one place where there's a suk- um, lulav, or one place where there's sukkah. The, it sounds like Rafam Zamagos would say go for the lulav, right? Because there would be a chiv de rice all seven, as opposed to sukkah, where there's only chiv de rice one. But would Rav Chaim Falaji say no? Maybe. Um, Rav Chaim Falaji might say, but, but it's called sukkah. <laughs> and Sukkot is well the Tadr Svara you don't have and you don't have the 7 and 1 Svara so you know it depends which Svara you want to use but there, there still might be a Svara bottom line is the Yom Tif is called Sukkot mm-hmm. and somehow that gives it a certain priority also according to our friends Spots at night uh, unless you say it's only called Sukkot because in Chut Svaras you only have Sukkot for 7 and, and uh, Lula for 1 but the Torah called it Sukkot no but I'm saying why because it's, it's it universally, the, it's more of a sukkah. He's worried about what what they call the kutzlarets in the Torah. I don't think so. They they, they worried about us in America. In <laughs> yeah, with good reasons. So. <laughs> so maybe you go then where there's better view Shami. <laughs> That's what they do in Yerushalayim, right? Okay, one more Maravak in the Stechemed. He quotes the Shaila. You have you don't have a sukkah. You don't have Dalad Minim. Where should you go? So he brings down the fourth line, the Maharshak. Who's the Maharshak? Rav Shlomo Kluger. He says that um, Rav Shlomo Kluger says you go to the Lulav Parsume Nisa. 
So it says the Steichem in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. In the ninth line, V'li hadal kasha l'achriya din zeh b'tamamelo. For me, me the impoverished one, it's very hard for me to use these types of reasons to, to uh, come to a, a definitive answer here. De'ein nira shezeh mikri persu menisa. It doesn't seem to me that because Lulav and Esrik shows that we won in the din, that's Parsume Nisa. What nace are you being mefarsin? Parsume Nisa is you're demonstrating a miracle. Not you're trying to teach a message. Not every single limud. Just because you're trying to say we won the war, that doesn't necessarily define it as Parsume Nisa. <laughs> Number two, the second why, because it says Lulav before Sukkah, therefore Lulav takes precedence over Sukkah, says the Stei Chemed, I don't buy, I don't buy into it. I don't accept that. Now, I saw in the Mate Ephraim... Could you say that Lulav is an Os and a Sukkah is not an Os? Ha! Huh. You want to know which one is an Os, don't you? Huh? Well, it's, see, now that we decided to let us have the Bea, so now the Gemara's are bothered, what's going to be with the Mate Katan over here at the end of... <laughs> so, those who sponsor these Gemara's should be very happy. Double score. First of all, it's a good thing I picked up this Gemara because I was missing it and have it to be mine. Um... There's a Toysus in Mayit Katan who talks about whether you should wear tefillin on Chalamayit. Right? The age-old uh, Machlekas. Do you wear tefillin on Chalamayit? What's the sad that you should not wear tefillin on Chalamayit? You ought to do Malach on Chalamayit. Or many Malachas. Because it's an ice. There's an ice. What's the ice of Sukkah? Is it the Lul of Ares and Esrach? Or is it the Sukkah? Is it? You don't carry a sukkah around with you. You just carry a little bit around with you. Isn't the simchas yamtiv tied more to the rule than actually? The simchas yamtiv? Yeah. Did you smack them? Unless you drive around with a sukkah on your back of your truck there. But that's a question that we're trying to Which are the... Um, let's see if we can find it quickly. Okay, so the Stechemet does not buy into that. Then he quotes the Mate Ephraim, who says, What? You could do whatever you want. He quotes the Prima Gaudim and the Esh Avram, who says, Sukkah comes first. And then he quotes his friend, Hagoin Marino Rab Matasyo, Abbez in the Kalkadosh, Butian. In the Sefer, Haboy or Matas Yodoy. He argues on the Mount of Aram Pasak, you go to the Sukkah. And the Bissam Rosh says, you go to the Sukkah, which is Tadr. And he quotes the, Sefer, the Amoy L'Cholchai, and he says, you go to the Sukkah. And he quotes the Sefer Bar Yad. Who is oymed in this chakira? If you have two mekaymos, one place has a lulav and not a sugan, one sugan not a lulav, and he says the matir from says you pick them, and he disagrees. They go to the sukkah. Why? Mm-hmm. 
Then he says the following. Let's say you have a Shaila. You could go to one place. In one place they're going to be blowing shofar. On, on Rosh Hashanah, not on Sukkot. On Rosh Hashanah. Right? Um, and the other place they're going to be making brachas. Brachas. Which brachas? He says, And the bracha is not. Even if the bracha is yachal l'shmar gam biyam rishon, loy kenat kiyos mishamachi. The bracha is kaidmos. If let's say in one place they're going to be blowing shofar, in one place they're going to be making malchios sechreinos shofarais. There is a tzad to say that you go to the makayim that they're making the brachos, even though the brachos may not be doy raisa, probably not, and the shofar is. Why? He says, "Kivan shabrachos yuchal l'shma gambi yom rishon," because there you could do it on both days, but not the tkiyos. Therefore, the brachos come first. And if they're both doy raisa, then certainly the mitzvah of sukkah would take precedence over love. So this is an interesting shaila about priority in the sukkah over dalim minim. Okay, have a great. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.